Today, I'm gonna to be documenting my experience installing this Redliner 9000 intake plenum, as well as the Redliner 9000 thermal gaskets for both the intake manifold and the throttle body into my 2005 Toyota Corolla XRS with the 2ZZ GE engine. Let's go ahead and get these parts installed. First, the plastic engine cover needs to come off. Recently, I bought this Milwaukee M12 ratchet, which makes quick work of these 10 millimeter bolts. Next, I have to get rid of this protective foam so I can get access to the 12 millimeter bolts behind it. Needless to say, this isn't going back into the car. Now I'm disconnecting my in-gen cold air intake from the throttle body, which is being removed next. Ooh, don't let the intake touch the battery terminal though, that'll make this very not fun. And these 12 millimeter bolts are no match for my Milwaukee ratchet. These vacuum hoses are going to need to come off for a little bit. Now I'm going to loosen these easy to access bolts holding the plenum and runners together. There's more bolts though, don't be fooled. And another bolt here on the side has to go. Sorry bud. Now the fun part, I'm removing these 5 12mm nuts and bolts holding the runners to the engine head. I'm really glad I invested in this new ratchet right about now. Uh oh, turns out my socket isn't small enough to reach this bolt in the middle. And my other 12 millimeter sockets seem to have taken the day off, so it's off to the store we go. Hop into the daily and we're ready to head out. After dealing with a little bit of traffic, Go you f***ing muppets! I finally made it to the happiest place on earth. Harbor Freight. Into the store we go, this seems good, now rob the store and walk out like an absolute chad. Lovely. Bit more driving and we can get to work on the XRS again. And these bolts can finally be removed. Now we're ready to pull the intake manifold out. Or not. Huh, I won't even move a little bit. Ah, that's the problem. There's a bolt on the bottom. Now we can remove the manifold. It still doesn't come out. What gives? Well, there's a little bolt holding the oil dipstick to the intake. Thanks, Toyota. Remove this bracket here and... Oh, looks like my ratchet doesn't fit. No matter. Three extensions later and we are in business. Nice, we got that silly bolt out. Now let's remove this manifold. Oh, come on, what could possibly be holding this thing in now? Jesus? No, actually, it's this little triangle bracket which is here for some reason. Thanks, Toyota. So we're looking for a convenient spot to put three bolts holding in this triangle bracket. Where should we put them? I know. Let's put them right behind this thick wiring harness so you can't use a sock and ratchet to remove them. Ow! You're a genius! Well, suck it, engineers. I still remove that bolt with a socket and ratchet. Whatever you can do, I can do better. Okay, now we can remove this manifold. It's about time. Or not. Come on, all the bolts are out. Just pull harder, p Oh, nope. Looks like there was one more bolt. <sighs> yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. Fan shroud, you gotta go. You're too big. This manifold is never coming out with you still in here. And the fan shroud is almost out. Why is it not out yet? Oh, that's why. You have to unplug it first, you silly goose. Nice, there it goes. Lovely. Take out this little hose. Please don't spill coolant all over me. Yes, the manifold can finally be removed. Why isn't it out yet? Just pull harder for f**k's sake. There you go. Nice. This took way, way too long. So, the main thing was just this bracket right here and unbolt this the rest of the way and put this little triangle bracket where it belongs. So this is the part that we're replacing. We're not replacing the entire thing. We're just replacing this bottom part of the plenum because these are the runners, this is the plenum. So in order to actually get this installed, you need either the Corolla or the Matrix manifold. So that one, because that one is in two pieces versus the Celica is just one. I'm about to run out of daylight, but I'm gonna go ahead and take these two bolts out. There, I mean, there are three. There's one there, one here, and one here. Take all these out, separate the runners from the plenum, and then bolt the runners to the new plenum. There we go. Oh, I lied. There's two more bolts back here. I thought there was only going to be three. All right. Well, it looks like there's another millimeter bolt in here. So hopefully I remove this and then the runners and the plenum will separate. I'm missing all these bolts. There's another bolt over here. It's almost there. There we go. The runners have been removed. They've been separated from the plenum so there are 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts holding the runners to the plenum. It's nighttime now. How am I supposed to film in a dark parking lot? Well, with the power of editing, boom, I grant you more daylight. You have two wishes left. The new plenum needs some fittings installed. I mean, how else are you supposed to install these vacuum hoses? Now tighten the fitting. Look at my watch. It's a Rolex from Walmart. Now let's put this thermal gasket on. Look at how nice that looks. Why is the fan shroud back? I thought I removed that. No matter. Move it off to the side so we can get this intake manifold installed. And it looks like it's giving us some resistance. Come on, use some more force. See? Forcing things into place works every time. Now tighten up all these bolts. We're almost done. And that's when disaster struck. <sighs> So, I've run into a bit of a problem. Let me show you what I mean. So the main issue that I'm dealing with right now, a little bit of wiring, a little bit of vacuum hose stuff, and just overall fitment issues. So I need to extend the wiring harness for two sensors, these are. One on this side, one on this side. I'm not 100% sure which ones these are, maybe intake temp and idle control. I'm gonna guess that's what those two are with the intake that this is pretty much where the throttle body was before and it would line up pretty well and now it's coming straight out like this need to extend the wires i need to get this hose and that should be pretty much it the other thing i've needed to do is cut off one fin here uh, on the fan shroud so that the throttle cable will actually fit otherwise it just hits this this little fin right here and it doesn't work so that's what i've got going on right now it's not too much it's just minor annoyances i'm pretty close i'm almost done i just need to do some minor minor things now we just cut the wiring boring then we splice it all together boring and then let's extend this vacuum line <sighs> boring let's just see the car start <laughs> it was just the sensors that went bad. It's alive again. Oh, I'm so relieved. Oh, I'm pumped. Yes! That is correct. The XRS is running once again. I want to make it real clear right now that the problems that I encountered are not the fault of R9K and are not the fault of their products. Sometimes things unexpectedly just happen and this was just one of those cases. But let me go ahead and show you everything under the hood now because some things are a little bit different and some things are still the same. So I'm gonna show you everything that has changed from stock form until now to get this plenum installed. So a few things have changed since uh, stock form. One is all the vacuum lines. I've had to extend a lot of these, especially this one. So this normally goes way up here and obviously is not long enough anymore. So a lot of these vacuum lines are just kind of teed, except for this one here, which can still reach all the way back here. The second, my in-gen plug that normally is somewhere around here, I put right on the secondary air injection up here. I do have a check engine light for it right now, but I'll get this solved pretty soon. This is an entirely new throttle body down here. So I think what happened is either my TPS or my IEC or both of them ended up failing while I was installing this somehow. I don't know how that happened. The new throttle body fixed it, so it's running yet again. There's a little ground down here, which I had to bore out the bolt hole for, but I mounted this to where the old plenum used to mount. And then I've also redone this battery mount. So this is just a rubber battery mount from AutoZone. It's just a really generic mount, just so the battery doesn't move around since the battery did get pushed forward and I couldn't use the stock mount anymore. Also as well, I have disconnected the coolant lines that go to the idle air control valve or solenoid or whatever. So those are now just teed together down here. I'm not sure if I'm going to reconnect the coolant lines back to the IC or not, but I'll decide on that in the future. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Throttle response is 
significantly improved. It is also, I believe, a, a decent bit quicker. It's definitely noticeable, especially 0 to 60 and when it hits lift. And in general, despite all the difficulties that I experienced throughout this installation, I'm very happy with the result. I don't want to make clear that everything I'm saying is not scientifically proven. This is what I've experienced uh, through my brain. This is not putting the car on a dyno and seeing how much more power it has made. Take my words with a grain of salt, but I do want to just say I'm very happy with the install. One thing I did notice with the old plenum is check out all of that oil buildup on the inside. Look at all of that. So to counter that, I have not one, but two oil catch cans, which should hopefully be taking care of that issue so we don't get the same kind of buildup in the new R9K plenum. And you guys will be seeing a video on this install very soon. Thank you everyone for watching my experience on installing this R9K intake plenum. If you want to see how to install these fantastic looking Celica GTS sport pedals, there's two videos right up here in both automatic and manual form. Also, click down here to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.